Last week, I dropped a video that basically says dark-skinned black men are not affected by black erasure and colorism or something like that. If you see the video, you understand. I, this is not a statement. This is not me saying that dark-skinned black men are not affected by colorism. It's a statement that was made by a dark-skinned black man, and not just one. It was actually made by two or three a couple times, and I'm pretty sure some of you ladies have heard that expression as well. So I wanted to address it. But during that, there was a lot of comments, and I only managed to grab one because it's hard to go through all the comments. I managed to find one. Well, I think a lot of people have colorism confused with racism. Not, and I'm not saying everyone, but a lot of people. And it seems to be predominantly men that seem to have colorism confused with racism. We're talking about colorism. And then I would get comments basically saying men experience it worse because we get killed by the police and disproportionately placed in prison. And it's like, hold on. I get that. But that's not colorism. That's racism. That's not the same thing. So that, for me, made me think, hmm, a lot of people don't seem to understand what colorism truly is. This is just one of the comments that I found. Some people, they get a little bit angry about it, like, you don't know what you're talking about. What are you talking about? Of course, black men experience colorism. One guy said something along the lines that he would rather be not chosen in relationships or picked because of his complexion rather than being killed by the police. And again, that's not colorism that you're speaking of. That's racism. Colorism is something that's internal. It's, it's a form of internalized racism. I'm, I'm going to pull up the comment. You guys might not be able to see it because it's a bit small. It's a bit small, isn't it? I'll read it. And I think it's important we understand that it's about educating ourselves. He said, interesting video, so many sub-conversations within this conversation, but as a very dark man that moved from a predominantly black part of Trinidad, where 90% of the island is black or brown, I would not say it does not affect me. My personal safety is at risk every day when I walk among white people. I can see the visceral fear in their eyes. Women need their beauty validated in a way that men don't. And I can never fully understand what it's like to be a dark sister watching women of other race buy black features, booty, lips, cheeks, implants, tanning. But my main point is that I would rather be marginalized and ignored than imprisoned or murdered. So although this man makes some valid points, we're having two different conversations. We're speaking about colorism. He's speaking about racism. To some of you, that clicks straight away. That registers straight away. He's making a very valid point. However, we're having two completely different conversations here. We're talking about colorism. He's talking about racism. It's like if I'm talking about cancer and treatment necessary for cancer and you're talking about HIV. Both are very bad. Both are screwed up. But we're having two different conversations. The cure for one may not be the cure for the other. So I felt it was necessary that some people will understand the differences. Now, colorism is a byproduct of racism. It is created as a branch of racism. It is an offshoot of racism. Racism is a hatred of people of a different group and race when you are able to oppress them through your prejudiced beliefs and your actions. Power plus prejudice equals racism. We get that. Now, colorism is internalized racism. It's internalized hatred. The definition itself in the dictionary states that colorism is a hatred of darker skinned people within the same ethnic or racial group. That's not to say that somebody who is white can't be colorist towards a black person who happens to be dark skinned. There are many white organizations that pick lighter skinned black people over dark skinned black people for particular jobs. Is that a form of colorism? Yes, it is. But it's still racism because the chances are that that person who is colorist towards the dark skinned person is also going to be racist towards a light skinned person. Because if they're going to be racist to one type of black person, they're going to be racist to the other. It pretty much stands to reason. Right. But when we're speaking colorism, we're talking about something in particular that happens amongst the black community. For example, we addressed the comment that the man made when he said he'd rather be ignored and marginalized rather than imprisoned or murdered. When he's talking about being in prison, black people are not imprisoning other black people. So he's talking about something that's happening towards black people from white folks or from Asian folks or something like that. So what he was talking about was specifically racism and not colorism. He's talking about a completely different thing. Another guy left a comment and said, but lighter skinned men are more likely to get jobs over dark skinned men. This is true. This does happen. There is a certain level of light skin privilege that is afforded to you. Remember what privilege is. Privilege is something that is given to you. You're either born with it. And if you're born with it, you have to inherit it. And it's given to you by those that hold the power structure. So it's something that's given to you. Again, 
we're not speaking about colorism. We're actually talking about racism. There is a form of colorism there within that, but it still stems from racism. Because unless you're applying for a job and the owner of the company is a black person and they don't give you the job because you're dark skinned, that would be colorism because it would be happening within your own community. However, if the person who happens to be white or Asian doesn't give you a job and you're a black man and you happen to be dark skinned and they don't want a dark skinned person working in their company, that's racism. There is a factor of colorism in it, but it's racism by the very definition. So there was a lot of miscommunication there. A lot of people don't know what colorism is. The ladies, I think the sisters seem to know it more than the brothers. I'm not talking about all brothers. They're brothers that clearly understand it and know it. But I think the sisters know it more because they're so affected by it. And when we're talking about, for example, skin bleaching, when you bring up self-hate, when you talk about colorism, people just think automatically, oh, we're talking self-hate, this, that, that. When we're talking about body dysmorphia, so skin bleaching, that comes from body dysmorphia. How does that work? That comes from racism. And from that racism, it and develops into colorism. And from that colorism, branches off into, I guess, color-struck behavior and then branches off into self-hate. So it has a development. The person that bleaches their skin, they hate what they see in the mirror. And because they hate what they see in the mirror, they want to be something different. They started to hate what they saw in the mirror because somebody in their family or the people around them and sometimes people that looked just like them told them that they were too dark and their features were ugly. But those people that told them that they were too dark and they were ugly were taught that and were told that very same thing from the pilgrims, from Massa. Because then the white man said to you, you're too dark and you're ugly and your skin's too dark and et cetera. So you see how we start to work backwards and we understand how what the root cause is. You have racism. And this anti-blackness and this move to make you hate yourself, because if you hate yourself, you're easy to destroy. And then it gets passed on to, gosh, I mean, I must think, you know, I don't know if this happens in the African-American community. I don't know if this happens in the African-American community, but Jamaicans in the building. And I don't know if other West Indians do this, but I know Jamaicans do. I can only speak for myself. In Jamaica, sometimes when a baby is born, what they'll do is... The parents will pinch the bridge of their nose to make sure that they have a bridge and their nose is not quote unquote flat. I don't know if this happens in here because I don't know. Right. But I know that this happens in the West Indian community. Predominantly, I know what happens in Jamaica. So that alone is like, well, why would they do that? Because they've already been taught. They've already been taught that, you know, a nose that looks like that is not attractive. It's it's not a cute trait. So they what they do while that baby's. Uh, bone structure is malleable they're molding it to have a more eurocentric look and you're like wow where does that come from well you go backwards so because you go backwards you understand that they told you oh look at your nose look at your lips look at this look at that malcolm x told us you know he said who taught you to hate the color of your skin there are some people that the moment you happen to be light-skinned they're like oh my god this like look at that and there's a lot of there's a lot of men that do this as well a lot of men do this You have brothers that lose their ish over a woman when she's (laughs) light-skinned. I think it's funny sometimes because I knew so many color-struck guys growing up and they all happened to be dark-skinned. And as soon as they saw a light-skinned girl or a light-skinned woman, they would lose their ish, lose their mind over it. Like, oh my God, yo, light-skinned girl, yo, light-skinned, light there, there was a video and guys talking about light-skinned girls, dark-skinned, you know, they, they were kids, but they were talking about light-skinned girls and, you know, they were talking about, you know, when you're light-skinned, you're just pure and you're just clean and you're just fresh and you're this and you're that. And and it's a form of being color-struck. You know, they're color-struck by that. As soon as somebody happens to be light-skinned, they're color-struck. Black girls are just busted. Like, the, the light-skinned girls look so much better because, like, I don't know, like, when, when you see a dark-skinned girl, you think crusty. When you see a light-skinned girl, you think, like, oh, my gosh, she's beautiful, you know, like. But when you see a dark-skinned girl, you see, like, crust, dirt, ash, ass nasty, crust. Okay, crust. But they're, they're all just so disgusting, like. But when you see a light-skinned girl, it's like they're all beautiful. I mean, you could see a... a I mean, it's, I know it's hard to say about ugly, light-skinned girl, but they're all so beautiful. In the black, the darker skin, they're just poo. They're, they're nasty and they're pitiful. And and did you ever see a black girl with, with weave? Like, they can never find weave that go with their skin, so it looked like, it looked like they're a carrot. And then 
it's it's just disgusting. But when you see a light skinned girl with with weave, it's like it looks so much better. It looks like the girl could be a model. And it makes me laugh when people say women only like you because you're light skinned with long, thick, curly hair and light eyes. And I'm sitting here like, you know, <laughs> what's what's the boy name? Um, Ice JJ Fish. Ice JJ Fish is light skinned, you know, and he's not an ugly guy, but he's got a look, doesn't he? He has a look and he's light skinned and he's I think he's about my complexion, might be a bit lighter than I am. Being light skinned. Having light eyes, having long hair doesn't automatically make you a good looking person. And if you associate being light skinned with automatically being, you know, pretty or attractive, then you are color struck. Because if you are, if the first thing is, oh, yeah, somebody's light skinned, somebody's this, somebody's that, then they're a good looking person. Like being light skinned doesn't mean that you're good looking. And I just brought him as an example, you know. We could use iced tea, right? Iced tea's light skin, you know, light eyes, long hair. It doesn't make, I'm, I don't think many women find iced tea attractive. Maybe back in the day, maybe not now, right? Apparently, we don't age too well. I don't know. I'm trying to make sure that that doesn't happen with me. But if you automatically say because he's light skinned, he's handsome, then you're color struck. If you automatically say that. He has such a beautiful singing voice, Ch Cherise said. Cherise, you love lie. Anyway, <laughs> don't make me do it. She was like, he has a lovely singer voice. It's something about the girl that just makes my head on a twirl. Now, could somebody be color struck over dark skin people? Yes, they could be. But now this is the part that maybe some people would say I'm a hypocrite for, but I'll, I'll break it down. If you're color struck over dark skin people or dark skin, that's not a negative. And the reason that's not a negative is dark skin is so is so hated. We're taught to hate it. So we're going against that negative trait. And you have people that are marginalized. You have people that are oppressed, people that are attacked because of their complexion, their skin and told, told to hate their skin. So when you come along and say that you love dark skin and dark skin is just amazing to you, it's not a negative because you're going against that negativity. You're going against it and you're bringing out a positive. This may happen in the reverse where, for example, somebody says they love dark skin and hate light skin and light skin is ugly and this, that, that, and the third. And of course, whenever you say a positive to one person and then negative on the other, the other hand, that's a whole negative thing. It doesn't counteract it. The problem is that so many times when somebody uplifts somebody who happens to be light skin and they uplift that person, a lot of times they'll down dark skin people. Men or women, they'll, they'll down them. They'll say, well, you're ugly. You're ugly. You know, they only do light skin. They don't do this. It's like when Lil Wayne told those brown skin or dark skin models that they would be better if they were red skin. And I think he even ended up putting it in a song. How do he say was never said? Beautiful black woman. I bet that bitch look better red. And he said himself, when people brought it up to him and said, but your daughter's dark skin. And he said, the difference between my daughter and these women is she's got money. So there you go. Color struck. Somebody brought up fetishization. They said, is that a level of fetishization? We need to get away from the idea that black people fetishize other black people based on being black. You're black. It's default. You're allowed to love and want black people. The, what is a fetish? A fetish is something that is needed in order to obtain sexual gratification. Right? So you don't feel sexually gratified unless you have this very thing. If, for example, let's say I know guys that love booty when you have a booty fetish and they have a booty fetish like if she does not have a big butt they don't want to know literally can't do nothing for them right but when you have a big butt fetish you don't care whether it's on a black woman a white woman you know and you don't care because your fetish is specifically about the booty so that's what your fetish is when someone has a fetish for black women or black men then obviously that person has to be black. They have to be black, otherwise they won't get sexual gratification. When it comes to pilgrims, white men, Asian men, a lot of times their fetish is for not just black men or black women, but dark-skinned black men or black women. I've spoken on this before. I spoke about my cousin who happens to be dark-skinned, my other cousin who happens to be brown-skinned, and then there's me and I'm light-skinned, right? And how we were seen differently and how we were treated differently and things like that. 
I noticed when I was growing up, I was at the end of the light skin phase where, you know, light skin men were kind of in. I, I, I kind of caught the end of it. It kind of died off as I hit 21. But for me, like I said, it never really bothered me because I always had me. I always had my personality, my intelligence. And, and so it didn't matter what I look like. I was going to handle mine regardless, right? My cousin, who's very dark skinned, and then my other cousin who's brown skinned. So my brown skinned cousin was better looking than either me and my other cousin. Better looking than both of us. When we would go out, I noticed that black women would look at me and pay attention to me. And I noticed that white women would lose their ish over my dark skinned cousin. Lose their ish over him. And he didn't get that much attention from black women or from dark skinned black women. I noticed that. And then my brown skin cousin, who was better looking than both of us, I noticed that for him, he would get attention within the black community from black women, and stuff, but not from white women. He didn't get attention from white women. Now, for me, I won't say I, I didn't get attention from white women because there was a section of white women that had a thing for mixed looking or biracial men. I noticed with white people, when they have a fetish for black people, they are real either. It's, it's like two extremes, either into very, very dark skinned black people or people that look mixed or a mix. So sometimes I would get it from white women where they would, you know, tell me that they're, they're into me, da, 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 stuff like that. I noticed that it's two extremes. There are sisters, and I met sisters who happen to be not necessarily that dark, brown skin, and they dated white men or stuff like that. And those white men would turn around to them and almost try to blacken them up. I don't know if people are going to tell the truth about this. But that white man would say, you should go in the sun more. Have you thought about going in a sunbed? Oh, you should make your hair natural. Get rid of the weave. You know, get rid of, you know, the perm. Make your hair natural. I knew this woman that said to me, she was married. She said to me, her husband would tell her to make her hair into an afro. And she was like, her hair didn't really do that because she had a, she had different hair textures. She didn't have 4C hair or 3C hair. She actually had like 3A hair, but she was black. Black people can have all hair types. And she wasn't that dark. She was like a light brown. And he would say, you know, you should go in the sun more, do this. She didn't notice until being with him for a while. She was like, this man's trying to blacken me up. <laughs> He's trying to blacken me up. So you start to see there's many facets of it. There's many different dynamics, right? Now, with how it plays out when we're talking about colorism, when brothers turn around and say, you know what? But we get killed on the streets. We get falsely imprisoned. This happens, that happens. That's not colorism. You are being targeted because you are a black man. You're being targeted first and foremost because of your race. There are people that say that there are statistics. I've never seen these statistics and I'd love to see them. I have no problem with somebody sending them to me, putting them in the chat or something like that because I've been searching for many years that there is a higher rate of dark-skinned black men being killed than light-skinned black men. But I've seen images and pictures of light skinned black men that are being that have been killed by police. Does this make me say that it's equal how black men are killed and stopped by police? Of course not, because I'm not an idiot because I grew up in the hood and I saw that. I know that when you have two black men, you have a light skinned black man and you have a dark skinned black man. If the light skinned black man happens to be walking in the white neighborhood, he's going to get arrested and possibly killed. Because he's a black man and it doesn't matter about his complexion. If he's a dark skinned black man and he's walking in a white neighborhood, then it could happen to him as well, right? Now, if they both happen to be walking in the hood, both happen to be walking in the hood and it's like a throw up and the police officer's like, I got to pick one. Who am I going to pick? Chances are they're going to pick the dark skinned guy. Chances are they're going to pick the dark skinned guy. And, and this is a fact. We, we know this because it's like, who do they hate more? But this is still based on racism because you, when you are darker skinned, you're seen, they, they see you as a purer version of that race. So it is based around your race. When it's talking about like jobs and environments and job place, when they realize that they have to start giving black people jobs and they have to do this and they have to do that, they start talking about acceptable blackness in the workplace. Maybe that person's too dark. Maybe that person's hair is too Afro, too wild, too expressive, too ethnic, too whatever. So they start looking at acceptable blackness. And I've experienced this. I've experienced being the acceptable black guy. When you experience being the acceptable black guy in the corporate world, you know, in any work environment, what happens is they, for a moment, they talk to you about certain things and forget that you're black. So they'll say certain things when they're talking about other black people. You have to look at me, you know, I'm black, right? I remember this white woman, I worked for this company. She asked me something and she's asking like, you know, where are my parents from? And I said, oh, the Caribbean. My dad's Jamaican. She's like, I knew you were Jamaican. I like, I absolutely knew. I was like, oh, okay. Did you? Really? 
And she's like, yeah, because I feel like Caribbean people, they're always lighter than African people. And they're also better looking. And I looked at her and I just thought, I've already come into my knowledge of self at this point of time, right? And she was my manager, actually. And I looked at her and I just thought, wow, because I'm African. Like, I'm, I'm, Afri- I'm an African man and I'm offended by this. But I know you would not have said that to me if I was dark skinned. And even if you did say that to me because she brought up African in particular, I know you wouldn't have said that to me if I said, yes, I'm African. But it's still a form of racism. And it is racism. I remember going to a recruitment consultant once when I was looking for different work. I remember going in there rocking all black, a black suit, black shirt, black tie. And I had my hair pulled back in one. And the guy, he wanted to say something so much about my hair. You know what he ended up saying? He said, I don't think it's professional that you're wearing all black because it can come across as very intimidating. And I I said, but I'm wearing a suit. I'm wearing a black suit. I'm wearing a black tie, a black shirt, black shoes, an expensive suit. And you said that me wearing an all, all black, 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 is intimidating. And at this point in my life, I already realize what people are trying to say. You want me to soften up my image by what, putting a white shirt on instead of a black shirt? Really? Really? Come on now. Like, because all of a sudden I'm going to be less intimidating if I have a white shirt on versus a black shirt. Foolishness. It goes down to that what becomes covert racism, the subtle racism where they can't just say to you, yeah, I don't know. And all of a sudden it meant like I wasn't suitable. I don't think I can put you forward for that role. I don't know if I can put you forward for that role because, you know. And I was like, well, I'll gladly put on a white shirt if that makes all the difference. Like when I told you about that woman that said to me that my hair was unprofessional. And the only difference between the next day when I came back for the third interview or the second interview was that I put my, the Afro puff into a bun rather than just a ponytail. All of a sudden she said, oh my God, you look incredible. You look so amazing. I'm just like, really? I look the same. No difference. Other than you now can't, you know, stuff like that. Because what they want to do, they want to police you. And there's, again, this goes down to what I call as acceptable blackness. Acceptable blackness. So even when you're light-skinned, you still have to make sure that you're acceptable. There's still a level of acceptable blackness. Long hair is not acceptable. If your hair is too curly, and you know, too wild or too this or too big, it's not acceptable. The amount of companies I've been to where they've said, would you ever consider cutting your hair? And I'm like, no. What, does this offend you? But I know, had I been a dark-skinned brother, that it would be even worse. I know that. But when that comes from white people, that's racism. Yes, there is a level of colorism within it. But remember, by the definition of colorism, it is a hatred towards darker skinned people within the same racial group. So when people try to use racism that they experience from white people or Asian people to justify, to say, well, actually, colorism is worse for men than it is for women or for this or for that. You're talking about two completely different things. Corinne Gaines was a black woman. She was very light skinned. She was killed by the police. The police don't care. So again, I repeat, a lot of these people do not know what colorism is. Well, the people that were commenting on the video, they don't know what colorism is. And they're confusing racism with colorism. They're confusing it, completely confusing it. And that is a problem because when we are uneducated about a particular thing or we have a conversation or argument and we're not equipped with the necessary tools in how to deal with that, we fail. When we're speaking on colorism, I have people that turn around and say, but what about light-skinned people? Can light-skinned people be victims of colorism? And I'm going to have a whole video on this. I'm not going to give you too much. But I like to keep terminology as terminology. If colorism is a hatred of darker skinned people within the same ethnic group, then by that definition, light skinned people cannot be victims of colorism. Now, all of a sudden, you get a light skinned person that goes, bruh, I had a dark skinned person set fire to my hair. I had a dark skinned person tell me that they wanted to kill me. I had a dark skinned person cut my face. I had a dark skinned, you know, something like that. I'm not saying that that didn't happen to you. And I'm not dismissing that, but it's not colorism. It's not colorism. No, it's not. Because we're looking at the very definition. And I say this as somebody that has experienced hatred towards me uh, for being lighter skinned or for looking the way that I look. And I'm sitting here and telling you what I experienced was effed up, but it's not colorism. Because colorism is a hatred towards darker skinned people. And it's not reverse colorism because remember what I, I explained to you when we talked about when people say reverse racism. 
when you reverse something, you correct it. So if somebody says we're going to reverse the aging process, you're getting rid of the aging process. You're removing the wrinkles. You're, you're getting younger. You're being better. If somebody says we're going to reverse cancer, that means they're going to get rid of the cancer tumor. They're going to shrink it. So when somebody says you're reverse racist, I say, thank you. Thank you. Yes, I am. Even though I'm not, because I'm not trying to get rid of racism. I don't give a shit about getting rid of racism. This is what people don't understand. They, people have asked me, they said, what is your goal? Are you trying to get rid of racism? I said, no, that's not my job. You created it. You get rid of it. Pilgrims created it. You get rid of it. My job is to wake my people up so that they can see the technology that's going on and how they're getting played and how they are pawns in this game. And because of that, I get seen as a hate, as a person that speaks hate. That's not my job. So no, I'm not here to get rid of racism. I didn't create it. I, I understand parts of how it works. Now, notice I said I understand parts of how it works. Because when you are not the creator, the inventor of something, you can only observe and learn and study, but you will never know it to the depths of the creator, the inventor. They know every intricate detail of it. So if we talk about reverse colorism, by the same definition of what I just did with reverse racism, it doesn't exist. A reverse colorist would be somebody that's trying to reverse colorism, trying to get rid of it. So it's about definitions and terminology. So again, I'm not saying that light-skinned brothers and sisters do not experience that kind of hatred for being light. And we're going to go into it. And this is why it takes a bit more than just a video. And maybe this is why I want to do it as a live stream. Because there are underlying reasons. It took me time to understand this as a man. I remember having a group of guys who happened to be dark skinned come up to me after trying to talk to my girlfriend at the time. And she was brown skinned. And I don't mean dark, but she was brown skin. And I was young. I was a kid. Literally, I was a kid. I was probably about 17. And they were trying to talk to her, and I was in the store. And I come out of the store, and she's telling them, you know, she has a boyfriend, blah, blah, blah. And they see me, and there's about five of them. And they're irritated now because she won't give them her number. And like, what? Yo, that's your man's? Yo. And the guys came up to me and basically said that they don't, you know, the two, two of them in particular said they don't like light-skinned dudes. They don't like light-skinned N-words. Can't stand you light-skinned N-words. Can't stand you. One of them pulled out a knife and said, what would you do if I cut your pretty little face? And you know, it escalated. Such and such, such happened. And that wasn't the first time something like that happened where somebody had said, I effing don't like this or that, right? Now, I also noticed that being from the neighborhood that I was from, when brothers would see that you were light-skinned, they would think that you were soft. And I'm not talking about every light-skinned brother because when light-skinned brothers are deemed as soft, there's light-skinned brothers that aren't. And those light-skinned brothers are, who are not deemed as soft are the ones that are like six foot six and built like they, they're mad brolic. Like they're mad brolic. They're big. They're bulky. Like my uncle. My uncle's, my dad's brother is light-skinned. Then he's a big guy. He didn't experience problems like that when he got big. When he was skinny, people tried to test him. But the moment he got brolic, not a word. The same thing, and I explained that I have a dark skin friend, and he's not a big guy. He's not tall, but he never experienced the things that I experienced, right? He hadn't experienced that because he said people just automatically assume, you know, that he's aggressive, he's big, he's this, he's powerful, he's strong, stuff like that. You know, it, it almost gets ignored. But then you remember, I say you have to work backwards. Now, I'm not going to justify this because I don't think this, justi you know, this justifies it, but I'm going to go backwards. That boy. Because he was a boy. I was a boy and he was a boy. Those boys, those five boys that, want, that put a knife to my face and wanted to cut my face. And they were going to slice my face. It popped off. And had another person not been there as well to see this and come and run to defend me, my face would have been scarred from eye to my mouth. When he said, I don't like light-skinned N-words and can't stand you effing light-skinned N-words and I'm going to cut your pretty light-skinned face or whatever, right? Let's work backwards. He was trying to talk to a woman. She rejected him. He finds out that she has a light-skinned boyfriend. He's angry. Maybe he was rejected by black women prior for light-skinned men when he was much younger. Maybe he was always getting, you know, light-skinned men were being picked over him on a regular basis. That creates a certain level of animosity. Maybe in his own, and he was a very dark-skinned brother. And you know the funny thing? In today's day and age, I know the women drool over him. Skin like Onyx. I know they drool over him. But at that time, because he wasn't an ugly guy. So let's say his own family told him he was ugly. Let's say that when he was younger, 
And they were in school, even younger, people would pick on him and be like, ah, you black like tar, you this, you this, you that. Now, we know what kids are like, right? Kids are the most meanest, horrible people in the world. And kids are going to say what they can say to upset you. So if you have a light-skinned 10-year-old and you and him don't like each other, that light-skinned 10-year-old going to talk shit about your, your complexion. Because that's what kids do. The same as that dark-skinned kid probably was going to say that too. But you know how other kids will start to laugh and everyone gets involved and that makes them angry. So because of all that anger and that animosity that he experienced, like maybe from his family growing up, getting rejected by by young girls, because it normally happens when you're young. He now has this hatred towards all light skinned men. So does that justify why he wanted to cut my face? No, of course not. Of course not. He needs therapy. You need therapy. You were emotionally abused. You were mentally abused. You were a victim of bullying. You have been rejected, and that does a lot. That destroys people's self-esteem. But two rights don't make a wrong. It's not then fair for you to come and want to set fire to somebody's hair or cut somebody's face because you experienced bad things from somebody that looks like that. You need therapy. It's like if you have been abused by your mother or your father, it doesn't make no sense for you to then want to go and kill everyone that looks like your mother or your father. Your ass need therapy. Not dismissing your experience. But you ain't shit once you're coming to me and you're trying to cut my face for some shit that I didn't do. But because of how I look. Now, is that colorism? No. No, that's not colorism. Because remember, by the definition of colorism, I can't experience it because colorism is a hatred of darker skinned people within the same racial and ethnic group. Am I experiencing a prejudice? Yes. Am I experiencing a level of oppression? I guess. Am I experiencing violence? Yes. Am I, could it be bullying? Yes. But let's break it down even further. As a light-skinned man as well, you can't talk on that because of the concept of light-skinned tears. And the reason that a lot of people don't know about these things is because a lot of brothers do not talk about it. A lot of brothers don't talk about it. And the reason they don't talk about it is because they're like, oh, you, oh, you a bitch. Oh, you mad soft. Shut up, man. Getting told that you know what? But all the women wanted you when we were kids, so shut up and suck it up. Listen, I don't know in anyone's mind where getting the pick of women is worth having your face cut, destroyed, stabbed, shot, you know, stuff and attacked. That, that's just ridiculous to me. That, that's just ridiculous to me. I don't know anyone that's going to go, yeah, let, yes, bring on the ladies. Bring on the ladies. It's more important that I have the ladies than my life. I don't know anyone that thinks like that is, is warped. Their mind is warped. Res the Ace said, so is there a word for light-skinned people who experience something terrible based on how light their skin is? I don't think there is. I do not think there is. And I think that I'm, I'm going to be real with you, Res. I don't want to be the one to create it. <laughs> there is so much division and there's so much like oppression politics that to create another word that's specifically the opposite version of that is like, because even still, when you look at the past experience, the light-skinned person that picks on the dark-skinned person isn't picking on them because they were picked on for being light-skinned. And they hate, like, generally. I mean, it does happen, but generally. They're not doing it because they were told to hate their light skin and, and hazel eyes or something like that. There's differences there. That's not why that person does that. When, when people want to pick on somebody because they're darker and they're in the same ethnic group, it's because they've been taught that, you know, that they're better, they have a certain level of privilege, that, you know, there's this proximity to whiteness. Oh, you're better because you're closer to this and you look more like this. And, oh, you look like you're mixed with something and blah, 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 blah. But then again, I do know light-skinned brothers that hate dark-skinned brothers. I'm going to tell you that. I do know them. I've met light-skinned brothers that can't stand. I remember seeing a live stream and this light-skinned brother was just going in on dark-skinned brothers because of what he experienced. He said he'd never troubled them ever in his life. He never did anything to them. They picked on him every day, called him all types of bullshit, beat him up. He said he was stabbed, this, that, that, and the third. So, of course, he's going to have an animosity. He's going to have that animosity. And he literally said he, he said he has no connection with Darcy and Brothers whatsoever and does not care what happens to them because of how they treated him. And again, it goes back down to that same thing where it says, but because how you were treated by those people doesn't mean that you can have those feelings towards everybody. Now, of course, we could sit here and have a conversation all day long about what should we call it? What should we call it? I'm not here to have the conversation about what should we call it. But what I am going to do and what I am going to say is that 
Like I said, a lot of people don't know what colorism is. So let's just, I think that we got that out of the way now. Simply, if you are being oppressed, targeted by the police and by white supremacy, that's racism. So to say that colorism affects you more because of that, we're talking about two different subjects. It's about within the black community. Now, when we talk about within the black community, I talked about a hierarchy within the black community. There is a hierarchy in the white community and a hierarchy in the black community. I want to know if you guys agree with this. Some of you may, some of you may not. So I'm going to say in the white community. And I hope that the guy, those of you that don't agree with me, I hope you, you bear with me. Hierarchy in the white community. So you know that, and, and it says hierarchy order in the white community. You've got a light-skinned girl, looks mixed, she could be, let's say she's light-skinned and mixed. In the white community, she's at the top. She's not a threat. She's what they call beautiful with Eurocentric features. She's feminine. We're talking about what they would say. Then underneath her, you have this light-skinned man, and he's deemed as not a threat to white supremacy. He's not aggressive. He's not this. He's not that. Whatever, whatever, right? Then underneath that, you have dark-skinned black men. This is in the white community. So dark-skinned black men are going to receive more hatred than the light-skinned black man from police and from the white community and difference in jobs. But then notice you've got a dark-skinned black woman at the bottom because she is already marginalized by her own people as well as the white community. That white community has I've already put who they place at the top and at second and at third, and she's at the bottom and she gets the brunt of it all, believe it or not. But I have another picture. So are we in agreement about this hierarchy order in the white community? In the white community, you have light-skinned women at the top, light, then light-skinned men followed by dark-skinned men and then dark-skinned black women at the bottom. We can move over to the next slide. Yeah? Excellent. I wanted to move over to the next slide. Now, this is what blows people's minds, right? You have to show them the first one, this one, then you show them the second one. This is the hierarchy order in the black community. It looks very similar, doesn't it? But something has changed. So this is in the black community, not in the white community, but this is in the black community. Now we're talking about black people. We're not talking about hierarchy order of white people in the white community. We're talking about black people. Now in the black community, you notice that the man who was third is now at the top. And underneath him is the light-skinned woman. And underneath her is the light-skinned man. And then at the bottom again is the black woman. Would you like me to explain it? Okay. So in the black community, we're not talking about in the white community, the black man is the leader. The dark-skinned black man is the leader of the black community. He is a representation of blackness, of the original man, and he is the leader. He says what goes. He also says what is black and what is not black. And because of that, he says that the light-skinned woman who, that woman, and I specifically picked a woman that looks mixed, is black. And she's beautiful and she gets placed on a pedestal. So she comes underneath him. Then underneath her is the light-skinned man. And he is not really a man. That's why he's not, he's not a man. He's emasculated. He's feminine. That's why he's placed underneath her. He's placed underneath, underneath her because he's not seen as a man. He's less than. And when you look at that, when these particular brothers, I'm talking about, you know, these particular color stroke brothers will place lighter skinned women at a higher pedestal, but have this animosity towards that light skinned man. Now you've got the dark skinned black woman back at the bottom in both hierarchy versions. Nikki says she barely looks mixed. Nikki, I think you know why I picked her on purpose for that. In both hierarchy versions, the dark-skinned black woman is at the bottom. Now, she's beneath the light-skinned man, but she's also beneath the light-skinned woman because there's that level of hatred towards blackness, you know, self-hate, and she gets the brunt of everything. Now, we're talking about in the black community. When I say she gets the brunt of everything, what I mean, because I know some brothers go, well, black women are not getting killed as much by police as black men. I know that. Even though they are, they are because there's a lot of, you know, we like to forget that dark-skinned black women do get killed and stuff like that. But what I'm saying when I say this is this, that dark skinned black woman is going to experience colorism. She's going to experience sexism. She's also going to experience racism. That's why she's been placed at that bottom. When she's in that previous image I showed you, when it was revert, it was different 
people place in different orders, she was at the bottom again because she still experiences sexism. She still experiences racism and she still experiences colorism. That's what I mean by she gets the brunt of it because she's experiencing more things. More things are coming at her from different angles. Because I remember presenting this image once without the, um, the white community version, right? And people were like, this isn't true. This isn't true. This isn't true. They weren't reading. It says hierarchy order of the black community. We're talking about in the black community. No one can tell me that light-skinned men are at the top of that hierarchy order in the black community. So anyway, let's take this off the screen. I, are we understanding this now? Are we, are we understanding it? I think I'm glad you guys are catching it. I'm glad. And I want people to tell me if they don't understand it because then we can, we can go into more depth. Chocolate Coco said it's called triple oppression. I call it a struggle within a struggle. But that's a good term too. Dante said, I think your examples are too generalized. Well, when you're given an example, a basic example, you have to generalize. You can't turn around and make things super diverse because then what we're going to do, have a whole spider diagram? That doesn't make any sense. And it has to be generalized because on a generalized basis in the black community, light-skinned women are placed at a higher on a higher pedestal than dark skinned black women. And anyone that says that that is not true is a liar. In the black community, and we're talking about outside of what is attractive or deemed as attractive, light skinned men are not placed at the same level within the black community as dark skinned black men. Because women do not want no soft punk ass, gay faggy looking, debarged looking, can't protect her looking ass dude. And the reason I used all of those terminologies, like the word faggot, the barge, fag, and all that stuff, is because that is what gets presented as your light-skinned man. When they talk about light-skinned women, they say feminine, dainty, beautiful, all of these terminology. And then they put that also on light-skinned men and say they're feminine, weak, dainty, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And, it, and as a man, that's not a positive. That is not a positive. With dark-skinned black men, in that same regard to say that they are, they are masculine, they are leaders, they are bold, they're aggressive, they're powerful, they're protectors. And that aggressive aspect is a negative, right? It can be deemed as a negative when you're for certain aspects. Of course it can, but it can also work in the positive. But when that gets thrown onto dark skinned black women, powerful, leaders, aggressive, it becomes aggressive, hyper-masculine, always want to fight, et cetera, et cetera. They become negatives. There is also such a thing as pretty girl privilege and big booty privilege. There is, there is. Pretty girl privilege, it, it's kind of obvious, you know. If you're pretty, you're going to get a certain level of privilege. There are women who happen to be dark-skinned and they've got really big butts and guys who happen to be color-struck will lose their ish over her because she got a big butt or they deem her as super pretty. Call that pretty girl privilege. Now, this is not to say that they can't still experience colorism because of course they can. I remember once having this conversation and this woman basically said that she thought that my, again, like this other woman said that she thought it was a bit flawed. She said that her as a light-skinned woman, she's never experienced all this and she doesn't believe that she's placed on that pedestal at the top or placed on that pedestal directly beneath the dark-skinned black man in either, either or. And the reality was that wasn't going to happen. And the reason it wasn't going to happen is maybe she did not have pretty girl privilege. Maybe that's what it was. Not ever. So you see, when we start to go into deeper and stuff like that, maybe you don't look a particular way, maybe you don't do this. But what we do know is that certain men do not care whether a woman is pretty or attractive or in shape if she's white, but will care if she's pretty or in shape if she's black. And that same thing could possibly also attribute it to whether she's light-skinned. They don't care whether she's pretty or in shape as long as she's light-skinned. That's why you're giving people the basic and the basics are very valid. Now, the one thing I think that some brothers, some brothers dislike is they feel that they are being generalized. When you're talking about something that happens, you can't always sit there and say, not all. By the way, you can't give a disclaimer every five seconds because every time you talk, you're going to have to give a disclaimer. You're going to have to give a disclaimer every five seconds. I'm not talking about all. I'm talking about those particular. I'm talking about this in particular, that in particular, because it takes away from your message. Because the reality is, I always say, what do I always say? I say, I don't use the term collective and I never say all. I say too many and not enough. Too many and not enough. And, and that's a nice place that I like to stay in. Too many and not enough. Because where you have particular groups of dark skinned men who happen to be colorists towards dark skinned black women, that's too many. Even one, one person doing it is too many. It's too much. And the brothers that aren't doing it, it's not enough. Do you get what I'm saying? Because it shouldn't be happening at all. 
It shouldn't be happening at all. Too many are not enough. That is my position. That's how I stand on it. People think that somebody being dark skinned can't be colorist towards another dark skinned person because they're already dark skinned. Of course they can. It's like saying you're a white man, you have a black woman, so you can't be racist. Of course you can. You want to sleep with black women, that don't mean you love black people or even black women. There are dark skinned men who are colorist towards dark skinned women. Being a light skinned man and being in a relationship with a dark skinned woman also does not make you exempt from being colorist. Just because you're a light skinned man with a dark skinned woman doesn't mean you can't be colorist towards dark skinned men or even other dark skinned women. We have to lose this mentality that just because you have a dark skinned woman or a dark skinned man that you can't be colorist. Of course you can. And I'm not talking about specifically for dark skinned men. I'm more about both dark skinned men, light skinned men, light skinned women, dark skinned women. You can be a dark skinned. Oh my God, let me tell you the story. Two dark skinned women. Two dark skinned women, I know them both. The differences in complexions, not very different. One was tiny, tiny little bit lighter. Tiny, tiny. It, maybe it wasn't even lighter. It was different tones. The one that was a slightly lighter tone than the one that was much darker called her a black charcoal bee. That's colorism. I was shocked. I was absolutely shocked. I looked at her and I said, but you dark skinned yourself. I was shocked at the time, but then the shock didn't last for too long because when you realize that you have black people that are colorist towards other black people, that happens. Of course it happens. I told you guys about the story of the dark skinned girl that she was very dark and she would swear to God that she wasn't dark skinned. Swear to God. She's like, I'm not dark. I'm brown skinned. I'm like, you're not. You're dark. I was like, trust me, you're dark skinned. Shorty, you black like molasses. Like, damn, what are you talking about? Pretty, pretty skin, pretty glistening, glistening black. Swear to God, she wasn't dark skinned. Had the most negative things to say about other dark skinned people. Most negative things to say. There's a level of being a delusionoid. I mentioned that actually in the delusionoid video. Now, for some people, and I know some people, they say that, you know, colorism is a pointless conversation. There's no point in talking about this because it doesn't benefit black people. It doesn't uplift us. It doesn't do this. It doesn't do that. However, that's why with everything that when you talk about a, a negative situation, you, you have to have a positive. You know, you have to have a positive outcome. You have to have a learning. And when you understand, remember what I said to you guys, I said, we have to work backwards. We must work backwards. Too many of us are looking at the situation that we're in today and not working backwards. Sometimes we look at the past, but we're still not working backwards. You have to look at your situation you're in now and go a month backwards, 10 months backwards, five years backwards, 10 years backwards, 100 years backwards. You have to do that. We have to keep going backwards. So when you bring up that colorist person, that person that is colorist, whether they are light skinned or whether they are dark skinned, what you must do is you need to go backwards. That person who was colorist, why are they colorist? Why do they have self-hate? Maybe they were bullied and picked on by their peers that might have even been the same complexion as them or lighter. Where did that come from? Maybe it was their family members. Maybe family members were attacking them and picking on them and making them hate their skin. Why did the family members do that? Because white supremacy within itself was teaching black people to hate themselves because the people that hate themselves are a people that are easy to control. See, as, as you start to go backwards, it all stems from racism. Racism is the root. Racism is the root cause. But these are other branches. They birthed it. Colorism was birthed from racism in order to further divide. So as you start to go work backwards, you start to realize, actually, dear dark skinned person, man or woman, you're not ugly. Your skin is not too dark. But they want you to believe that so that there is infighting. And when there's infighting, you are a divided people. And when you're a divided people, you can be destroyed. But you have to work backwards. Now, that doesn't mean that what we do is we ignore it and then we just focus on white supremacy or focus on racism. That's not what I'm saying at all. Not even close. What I'm saying is we have to reverse the colorism. Now, remember what we did when we spoke about what reverse racism is and reverse colorism? Reversing colorism means correcting it, getting it to disappear. So when you have somebody that is affected by colorism, we have to promote positive images for both men and women. Now, women do experience colorism more so than men. And we know why, because we just looked at this hierarchy order. Because as black men, you are going to experience a lot of oppression, a lot of racism and for forms of colorism from non-black people. We're talking about the police. We're talking about all of this stuff. But also black women experience that too. But when you go into the black community and talking about the black community internally, it doesn't really affect you as a black man. 
but it affects dark-skinned black women. Where does this start? This does start from therapy. Therapy is needed. Therapy is so needed. It's unlearning. It took a process. I said this in a video before. I said it took a process to get us here, and it's going to take a process to get us out of this mentality and this mind state. You know, maybe if I was an older guy, when, I, I don't mean now, but back then when I was 17 and those boys basically tried to jump me and cut my face for being light-skinned and they happened to be dark-skinned, maybe if I was an older man, I would have spoke to them differently and I would have said, my brother, you don't have to see me as a threat. Your skin is not ugly. You don't need to hate me. They lie to you to divide us. They want you to hate your skin. They want you to hate your features. Yes, they have utilized people that look like me to turn against you because they tried to give us a false sense of superiority within our group so that we would pick on you and cause division. And now, further on down the line, we attacking each other because we're going to kill more of each other, marginalize more of each other than they will ever be able to do. You want to kill me. I'm not going to let that happen. I'm going to have to do something to you. We're, we're going to be fine. We kill each other. Two birds with one stone. When it comes to women, the more that we attack our women, tell them they're too dark, they're too this, they're too that, those women who then speak about black erasure and complain about it will then go with a white man or an Asian man and dilute their blood even more so. And what that does, it gets rid of them also. They then have this vitriol and this animosity towards that black man that has vitriol and animosity to her, so they turn against him. So he turns against her and he goes with a white woman. Maybe when I was 17, if I was as clued up as I am now, I would have said that to that brother. Would he have listened to me though? Because anger is crazy. Anger is deep. Anger can blind us. Now, as Anansi said in American Gods, angry is good. Angry gets shit done. And it does. When it's utilized and harnessed in the right way. However, a lot of us have anger that is misdirected at the wrong people. Because I don't hate you, my brother. But they want you to think that I hate you. I don't hate you, my sister. But they want you to think that. My view of you is tainted by them. Anything that I'm saying to you right now is nothing new. Because Brother El Hash, Malik El Shabazz, a.k.a. Malcolm X, told you this. Marcus Garvey told you this. Kwame Torre told you this. But anything that builds unity within the black community amongst all black people is a threat, is a huge threat. And they want to put a stop to that. Peace, love, and coconut oil. Hey, man, that's racist. Please remember that from now on, brand new, never before seen videos, as well as live streams, will only be available on my website, ikyg.com, via a Patreon subscription. IKYG.com is a black owned, black ran platform, 100% free from censorship. It's the only place where we don't have to worry about what we say and expressing ourselves. Make sure you check out the description and the comment section for important links, as well as information in video form that shows you what benefits you get when you support the site and join my Patreon. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more, then don't forget to subscribe and be notified every time I upload a video. For exclusive content and perks, check out my Patreon. This is where we have private live streams, group chats, live Q&As, live phone calls, and open topics. This is a safe space where you can interact with other like-minded people, make friends, send each other direct private messages, and so much more without any trolls. And yes, you get to use GIFs and images in the live chats. So what are you waiting for? This is a completely independent website, free from censorship. If you'd like to make a donation towards the site so we can continue to put out the truth without fear of being silenced, then please hit that donation button. It's greatly appreciated. Check out the rest of the site for videos, private and public live streams, find out all the tea, and make sure to utilize the black money section of the website. Advertise your business absolutely free to people that look like you, free forever. And don't forget to follow me on Instagram and Twitter at angel underscore IKYG.